Hello and welcome to The Main Cave. Now in today's video, I'm going to be looking at this, the Cyborg 2 from a company called Azeron. Mine arrived this week, and in this, the first of a series of videos before I do a full review, and before I do a comparison with the original Cyborg, I thought I'd start with a video explaining what it is and hopefully answer some questions that I had when I first got the Cyborg a few so if you're new here, we make regular videos on technology for gaming and for your smart home. So please do consider subscribing as we may make a video to make your life easier and I wouldn't want you to miss out. So do hit subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. So the first and most obvious question is, what is it? Well, it's pretty much a keyboard. Each key here represents a key press on a regular keyboard or the stroke of a joystick. Calling it a keypad is probably more suitable so you see each tower of the cyborg, well this has multiple ways to press a key. Up, down, forwards, backwards, left, right, depending on where the button is, and each equates to a key, whether it be M, C, Shift, Forward, Enter, whatever you like. You then play your game using the key presses you have set on each button. Now what comes in the box? Well, this depends on any extras you ordered, but a standard, you get the Cyborg 2 itself with your preferred choice of palm rest, a spare set of thumbsticks, spare screws, and a screwdriver. Then optional extras are either things like flat or curved palm rest, the Elite Sticks, grip tape, and an adjustable magnetic stand. So is it wired or wireless? Well, it's wired and that enables you to get the best performance from this machine. And what switches does it use? Well, it uses Omron switches and it says it has a lifespan of 50 million clicks. They feel very satisfying to use. And I'll give you a quick sound test. Now onto the thumbstick, and this is Hall Effect, so the boffins at HQ will tell us it will avoid any drift in the future. And what about what is it made of? Well, all the parts are 3D printed. My original Cyborg is a few years old and it's still going strong, and that also is 3D printed. The beauty is, if anything breaks, replacements are easy to come by, as they just get printed out. It feels very substantial and solid. I think 3D printing here was the right way to go about this over a much more expensive manufacturing process. So how many keys does it have? Well, in total, it has 30 physical keys or more specifically, 30 mappable inputs. But with the software, you can expand this. So you can set up one key as a sort of shift of sorts, which opens up a new layer of mappable inputs. But for most people, 30 should be enough. So is it just a bunch of pressable buttons? Well, no, as I mentioned before, there's also a Hall Effect thumbstick on the side, which can be used as WSD, just like a regular controller. Above that is another small clickable thumbstick, which can be mapped to whatever you like. Is there any software for it? Yes, the Azeron software can be downloaded from the website. Here you set your profiles and keybinds amongst other features. In fact, the software is so in depth, I may make a video on its own. So let me know if this is something you'd like to see. Now what happens if you have small hands? Can you still use this? Well, good news is when you order, you have a choice of size. So I'd like to say it will fit as it's very customizable and this fits my youngest boy's hands. So to be honest, I think you'll be fine. And is it comfortable? Hell yes, it's comfortable. Here it's just sat on my desk, but if you add the addition of the magnetic stand, it is a game changer. I'll go into more detail in the review, but this has to change the way I hold the Azron and I find it way more comfortable using it with the stand. First though, initially when you get the Cyborg 2, you'll want to spend the first half hour or so just adjusting the towers and the angles to your preferred way. There's plenty of customization in forwards, backwards, left, up, down, loads of ways to move each tower so it fits you perfect. So can I use this on consoles? Well, you can, but it's not designed for this. You will, of course, need the game you're playing to be keyboard compatible, and you'll need to set this up before on a PC, and it's still not really guaranteed to work, so I wouldn't bother. And what about a Mac? Well, again, it's not designed for a Mac. When plugged in, all I could do was get the thumbstick to register WAS and D, so I left it there. I'm not wasting my time when this is clearly meant for Windows gaming. Can I use it to type on? Yes, but horses for courses, really. Use a keyboard to type on, unless you get really good with this. 
game with the Cyborg 2, type with the keyboard. Do I need any specific drivers? No, this is just plug in and play, plug into your PC and it should automatically recognize it as an input device. Now, what about if you're left-handed? Well, you can order that in that configuration if that's what you need. It's exactly the same, but mirrored for all left-handed gamers. Is it USB-C? Yes, yes it is. What are all the differences between the Cyborg 1 and the Cyborg 2? Well, it turns out there's quite a bit. In fact, so much I'm making a separate video on this doing a full comparison. So please do subscribe to be alerted for when that one goes live. Now, what's the difference between the Cyborg 2 and the Cyborg 2 Compact? Well, from fear of stating the obvious, the Compact is more compact. It doesn't have the full height towers, instead buttons on the end of them. It's the same in almost every way, such as number of buttons and switches, etc. Now, is it hard to use? Well, initially, yes. There's quite a bit of muscle memory required. The key to getting off to a good start though is customizing the distance and angles of each tower to fit your hand perfectly. Get that right and make sure you're comfortable with all the placements before you use it. Really, see it like moving from a console with a joypad onto a PC using a keyboard. It's just about remembering where things are and when and where to press. You'll get the hang of it in no time. Is it better than a keyboard? Well, this is obviously subjective, but give it a go and I'm putting my neck out on the line here and say it is. Once you get used to it and get to a point where you don't think about it, it becomes second nature. It slowly becomes an experience you just can't match with a keyboard. I mean, I'll talk about my opinions in the review, but having a cyborg for years and getting this new one, you can already probably guess my thoughts on it. And what about the other features it has? Well, the software is where it's at. You have a choice of macros, long press, double press, timeouts, X input layers. Seriously, there's loads. As for the physicals, there's a profile switch on the side. So am I stuck with just a black and green color? No, you get to choose your color configuration when ordering. There's loads of colors and a special edition version if you fancy it. I had the black and the blue Cyborg 1 and I went green this time for the 2. So how much is it? Well, depending on your configuration, the latest Cyborg 2 comes in at 195 euros and then goes up when you add on all the extras. And how long does it take to arrive? Well, after ordering my specific build, it took just three working days or five, including the weekend, to arrive in the UK. So is it worth it? Well, find out in my full review, which is coming soon. And finally, where do I order one? Well, I'll leave links down in the description below. So they have it then. There's my first video on the Cyborg 2 from Azeron, a serious piece of kit. I hope I've answered all your questions here, but if you haven't, add them down below and I'll do my best in answering them in my upcoming full review. Please do like, please do subscribe. Until the next video, bye-bye.